Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the crossbreeding and potential fusion systems as they pertain to Ova Magica. Now, if you're new to the channel or haven't seen the Ova Magica videos I put out earlier this month, Ova Magica is a monster raising and farming sim that has you living out your day-to-day -day life, farming, building relationships with various characters, breeding and battling blob creatures, exploring the blob realms, which are these randomly generated dungeons, essentially, uh, crafting and more. The game takes inspiration from similar titles such as Stardew Valley, Pokemon, Azure dreams slime rancher and you get the picture so yeah definitely think of this video as your sort of preliminary overview of what we know about the crossbreeding system as it currently exists within Ova magica and then we're going to go and dive into the potential fusion system in the game as well fusion is currently locked behind a stretch goal that i honestly think we're going to end up hitting i want to discuss how exactly the crossbreeding system will work given various statements from claudia herself and within the kickstarter campaign then i want to sort of speculate exactly how the fusion system will differ from this and what the potential benefits and disadvantages are are to going one way or the other. Claudia also gave me a little hint to work with, so at least we have something there. Anyways, with all that being said, as per the usual, sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. All right, so let's start off by describing the breeding system, how it works, and what it'll likely entail. So Ova Magica features crossbreeding, which works off of an algorithm to allow your blobs to essentially have countless amounts of combination. During my interview with Claudia, the developer, she had mentioned that this algorithm basically decides where the body parts go on each blob, with the center circle of the blob sort of being the base, and certain parts taking priority over the others, etc. I'm sure the color also has worked into this algorithm as well. Now that said, breeding seems like it'll be a rather lengthy process and that it'll require the player take care of their blobs in various ways such as keeping them warm keeping them happy keeping them fed etc this screenshot here is just one of many examples of how keeping your blobs happy and healthy is integral to the breeding process the more you take care of the offspring's parents the better the offspring will be in terms of stats we also must remember that part of the egg hatching process is also keeping the egg warm and comfortable as well so breeding is definitely going to be a more involved process than it is in most monster taming games i do think that this will add more attachment to the various monsters that are bred out of the eggs than in games like Pokemon or Temtem or Monster Crown where breeding is quite easy and generally speaking you'll end up spending a lot of time throwing away imperfect offspring that won't meet the requirements for competitive play. Ova Magica is a single player game so competitive play isn't really a factor here but depending on your play style this could either be a really good thing or a really bad thing as some people might just want the strongest blob as quick as possible whilst others might enjoy this aspect as it creates a bonding experience with their creature and the creature's parents. I think given given Ova Magica's day-to-day -day more relaxing nature, this breeding system makes more sense. You're going to spend a lot of your time farming, going out on expeditions, crafting, decorating your house, etc. So this style of taking care of your creature aligns itself with the overall theme of the game. Now with all that in mind, we don't actually have the nitty gritty information about crossbreeding just yet as it pertains to like stats, exactly what other types of ways you can increase said stats, etc. However, as I mentioned previously, there is a stretch goal that currently requires 250,000 euros to be met and that features fusion. Now, as of the time of recording this video, the stretch goal has not been reached and there are only a couple days left in the campaign. However, I do think that reaching this is a strong possibility. And either way, I do think speculating on the differences between the systems is still an interesting conversation to have. So with the fusion system, we really don't have much information. However, I did speak to Claudia about it. And while she hasn't revealed too much, just because it actually hasn't been unlocked yet, she did mention that crossbreeding will have its benefits in terms of strength, while fusion will have its benefits in terms of having more control over the results. I have to imagine that based off of this, the fusion system is also a lot quicker and streamlined in comparison to crossbreeding as well. Okay, so let's touch on the pros and cons of each to give you guys an idea of why you might want to use fusion as opposed to crossbreeding and vice versa. So with crossbreeding, the pros are that you get a stronger blob in general, you get to keep the parent blobs, and if you're someone that's into the more day-to-day -day sort of stuff, you get to bond with your creatures. The cons of this system, however, are that breeding seems to take a decent amount of time, you will have less influence on which features exactly move over to the child, and you run the risk of creating an offspring that has poor stats if not taken care of properly, leading you to have to go through the entire process again. With fusion, the pros are that you'll be able to control which features pass over quite proficiently from what I've been told. Uh, this isn't confirmed, but I'm also assuming it's much faster, if not instant, or perhaps maybe it'll cost some sort of currency of some type. And you'll get to know the results right away. Now, the cons are that fusions will most likely not be as strong as a crossbreed of blobs based on what Claudia
Nia told me, and you'll end up losing the parents as they become the fusion creature. At least I'm assuming that's how it works because otherwise it wouldn't be fusion. Now, that's pretty much all the information we have about the game's fusion system, unfortunately, and as for the crossbreeding system, I'd love to make a more in-depth video when the game actually comes out, so think of this as more of an overview, introducing you to the general idea of how the system will work, and in the future we'll do a much better in-depth guide. Like I stated at the beginning of this video, there was a lot of speculation put into this, and just because we don't have all the information just yet, I think given Claudia's statements, my interview with her, and just what generally makes sense from a balancing perspective, we at least have a surface idea of what the systems will both entail. It'd be great if we could reach that $250,000 stretch goal for Fusion, so if you guys haven't backed and are deciding whether or not to, you have about three days left, so definitely check out the game and consider doing so. Anyways, with all that being said, if you did enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd, and you can check out our Discord where we talk monster taming. Until next time, peace.